Welcome to theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin on the ground at the Computer History Museum with the Association for Corporate Growth, Silicon Valley. Tonight is their 13th annual Grow Awards. We're very fortunate to be joined by the host, one of the hosts of the Fireside Chat tonight, Mike Malone. Hi, Mike. Hi, how are you? Good, welcome to theCUBE. Welcome to the noisy uh, cocktail party. Exactly. <laughs> so, you, have, you are an accomplished journalist, author. You have a lot of insight in Silicon Valley, technology for over 30 years. One of the things that piqued my interest in your bio is that you were the editor of Forbes ASAP at the time of the dot-com boom. Yes. So as we look back in a short amount of time, you must have seen massive transformation. What are some right. of the things that really stick out in your mind is how tech has come back? Oh, you know, it's really interesting because when, when the dot-com bubble burst, everybody outside Silicon Valley said, well, that's it. Silicon Valley's over, it's dead. And so there was nobody watching two years later when the social networks all started. And as a result, they kind of appeared, they seemed to appear out of the blue. But they had a couple years of runway before the rest of the world began to notice Silicon Valley again. Most communities die when they go through a transformation like that. Not this one. This one's always about what's next. Exactly, well speaking of what's next, you have authored and co-authored over 20 different award-winning books. As we look at new technology, machine learning, AI, virtual right. reality, what are some of the, of the and, and the big impact those technologies can make? Right. What are some of the industries and maybe even companies that are, are really of interest to you right now? I think the hottest companies of the 2020s don't exist yet. They're still on a, they're still beating at uh, Pete's or Starbucks <laughs> with their business plan. Uh, I do think we're about to see some really powerful social impacts of all of this. Not always good ones. For example, I think there's going to be fewer jobs. I think we're going to, on average, have less disposable income. And we're going to swap that. We're going to be home more. But our home is going to have that wall-sized TV. We're going to be able to travel the world via drone. We're going to substitute virtual experiences for real experiences because we're not going to have the money. I think we're going to be a lot healthier. I think some of these new medical devices are astounding. They're going to monitor every part of our body 24-7. So we're going to spot things well before they become a problem. So I think that's, that's a profound change in human nature. Absolutely, that yeah. sounds very interesting. One more question for you. You are very honored and distinguished in academia as well as technology. In fact, I saw on your LinkedIn profile a recommendation that one of your colleagues said, that, that read, you have an opportunity to study with Mike, Michael S. Malone, take it. Well, I suspect it's more like a, a drunken good time. <laughs> yeah, I think you look back, if you can remember it, you probably had fun. I don't know if you ever learned anything. But tell us about your experiences with Santa Clara University as well as Oxford. Uh, what are you doing there and, and what are some of the, what's some of the sort of cross-pollination that you see with academia, what you're doing there and Silicon Valley high tech? Well, there's not enough cross-pollination at the moment, but Santa Clara is about to double in size. They finally realized after 150 years, they really shouldn't continue being an oasis in the middle of Silicon Valley. They should be part of Silicon Valley. Stanford, obviously, under John Hennessy, did a brilliant job of getting out in the valley. We have this tremendous, unequal combination of uh, universities, colleges, community colleges right here and we need to sync them up more, we need to get them more STEM oriented. We need to take care of our own children here. I mean, we're very good at bringing in people from the outside, but we're not real good at finding places for our own kids in this town, and we need to work on that very seriously. Really interesting point there. So one final question as we wrap here. As I mentioned, you're, you're co-hosting the Fireside Chat with John Cow. We're going to be speaking with Patience Hagen of the Wall Street Journal on the future of Silicon Valley. You shared a little bit of that with us, which is quite interesting. Yeah. What are you expecting um, Patience to say about the future of Silicon Valley in tech? I'll be real curious. I mean, I've been writing editorials for the Wall Street Journal now for about 30 years. And she's out there on the line talking to venture capitalists. She's getting the inside dope of what's coming tomorrow. And I'll be very curious what she knows that I don't. Wow, if only I could be a fly on the wall there. Mike, thank you so much for taking the time to join us on theCUBE. Have thank a you. great time with your fireside chat. You too, have fun. And we're going to look in that crystal ball later on in a few years and see if what you predicted. Yeah, check, me, check up on me. <laughs>
Will do. Okay. We want to thank you for watching The Cube again. I'm Lisa Martin on the ground with ACGSV. Thanks for watching.